and welcome to Emerald Meadows, your uh, craft and RC uh, channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the assembly of an uh, inexpensive plane I found uh, from our good friends in China. It's called the Falcon. I'll have a link on, uh, on this uh, YouTube video uh, where you can purchase it. I think the, um, it was, I don't know, maybe $10, uh, $15. The shipping was probably cost as much as the plane did. But it was relatively inexpensive, and it came, uh, it's, a, it's a flying wing. Uh, it came with the uh, two detached wings and the tips, as well as the uh, clear cover that needs to be uh, cut and sized. The shroud, this is the uh, battery compartment. It came with um, uh, uh, the uh, cables, uh, servo lead extensions, um, connecting rods, uh, horns, uh, as well as motor mount and some foam glue. Um, I'm not going to use this foam glue uh, to put the, right now we're going to be putting the wings uh, wings on. Um, I'm going to use the uh, Gorilla Glue. Uh, this is my glue of choice. Um, however, the, the Gorilla Glue will uh, seep out of the joints. But uh, we're going to do something different with this plane. In order to make it look uh, nice, we're going to actually paint it. And uh, But first, before we do anything else, let's start the gluing. Start by putting on the old gloves because I tend to be messy and then get the old Gorilla Glue. I always buy the small bottles of Gorilla Glue. Uh, that way it always stays fresh um, uh, because it does begin to harden up in the bottle uh, over time. Now, now because these wings don't quite align up perfectly, uh, I've, I use uh, toothpicks as my uh, joining, as my aligning tool there. If you can just see uh, the little toothpick sticking out. That way when I put the two pieces together, they'll line up. Um, it just comes when you get a foam model like this. You're going to have those types of problems. So, um, Gorilla Glue and toothpicks. Uh, and you'll see that once we get the pieces together, I'm actually going to tape them with boxing tape in order to hold the pieces together while they dry. So here we go. Let's start the gluing. I'm going to provide a liberal amount of glue on the joints and the butt area. Okay. I think that should be sufficient. I'm going to use my gluing table. A little tip, a little tip on the um, gluing process of using this uh, Gorilla Glue. I always spray the other side a little bit of water. This is actually, the water acts as an accelerant, so uh, that's why I put the water on. So I'll join my two pieces up using my lines. And they look pretty good. They look pretty good. Yeah, I'm just going to maybe put a couple more toothpicks in there. Put in a couple more toothpicks just to hold it uh, together while I get taping. Okay, it's just to hold it temporarily in place while I glue the other side and uh, then we can tape. You can see that the glue is oozing out. Like I said, I'm not overly concerned since we're going to paint this model. Uh, we're now at the uh, next stage of the project. We've uh, uh, glued all the surfaces together. I use these uh, handy gandy clamps to keep all the surfaces um, uh, in place. Uh, as you can see, I use a lot of them. Uh, they do make some marks on the foam, but I'm not overly concerned about that because we're going to uh, put a coat of paint on there. And I'd rather make sure that I have a good, strong surface. Like this is very rigid. Um, this kit comes with the carbon fiber rods. And I'll be honest with you, I, for the price that I would pay for the carbon fiber rods, I got the whole model. So, uh, not, a, not a bad deal. So now I'm going to uh, clean up the surfaces and uh, trim off my uh, handy dandy uh, toothpicks that I use to hold my surfaces together for gluing. Uh, but I can tell you that I'm reasonably confident that this is a good solid flying wing. And uh, now let's, let's get ready for the next step. Okay. Now that I've cleaned uh, 
all the surfaces off. I've sanded some of the seams here, uh, and I've got it all ready and prepped for my next step for this model. I'm not going to leave it white, I'm going to paint it black. And uh, a few tips that I found in my experience on painting. Um, you can take a look here. Some of the spray foam, some of the spray that you get, Krylon and the other spray paints, it simply just eats away uh, at uh, EPP foam. Uh, I've tried a few. I've yet to find anything successful. I found a few things that if you sprayed a light spray on several times, uh, such as this here, uh, this here is just simply uh, auto paint, but even that you can see it models the surface uh, of the foam quite quite bad. What I find works is latex paint. This here is uh, latex paint that I get from Home Depot. Um, I just get the sample size jars. Uh, this is black and I'm going to use a foam brush and I'm going to paint the entire surface uh, black to give it kind of that uh, stealthy look. So we'll end up kind of like with a flying stealth wing uh, when we're all done. And I think it will, it'll go very nicely with the, with the nice black glass dome. So uh, now uh, I am going to, uh, now that I've finished sanding, I'm now going to apply the paint. I'm going to do that in my back work area. Uh, we've uh, completed uh, painting the, the, uh, the flying wing. What we're going to do in the process is we're going to add uh, the uh, servos uh, for the uh, uh, elevarons. I'm not sure if it's, it's elevators and ailerons together. Elevarons, elevarons, I think that's the word for it. Anyway, that's what we're going to work on now. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing we have to do is we have to separate out uh, where it's joined. It's joined in two pieces using a sharp knife. I'll just cut down both sides like so. And over here as well. And this will free up the uh, ailerons and elevators. Okay. Now, I found that you have to really, really push this in. The one thing that I use is I use my wife's nail files, the emery boards. And I get that into the joint that I just cut. And I file away some of the excess. Now that they're separated, we have to give it some movement. Okay. Get some movement up and down. Kind of break the surface. Um, is um, what I normally do next for these types of planes. I put tape on. Uh, obviously, this is a, this is going to be a weak point. Is is I make sure that I get the tape right into the seam there, so it's good and tight. So pull it up real real far as far as you can without breaking it okay and then take a bit of tape I just happen to have this handy dandy black lay it down on your model okay there's no perfect push down your aileron get this into that groove real tight right into that groove okay as you can see, push it out, push it out, push it out, okay. So this is a little reinforcement. I guess I could have done a little bit better job, a little bit neater, but you can see we have a good tight hinge and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Let's spin the wing around. Again, uh, for those of you that uh, have watched any of my other videos, uh, this is uh, a, a boxing tape that is colored. I will put the link up on this video as well. Uh, handy stuff. You can get them in a variety of colors. Uh, and for model air, uh, uh, airplanes, uh, it's, it's excellent. So, uh, take another piece of tape and we're going to add it to the upper surface. Give us that extra extra strength that we want. Now in this case here, I want to make sure the aileron is down as far as it'll go. We, want, we don't want any binding, we don't want any restrictions to the movement of the aileron slash elevator or elevator. 
you know the right words, please let me know. Okay, so with that in mind, I now have a nice, smooth working surface, and that's going to be sturdy. Um, this was pretty, uh, take your servo. Uh, this one here I've already centered already, uh, and, um, and I've done the adjustments. So um, I get some, get some two-sided tape here, and this is what I put in and hold for most of my um, uh, control surfaces. For some extra uh, strength, I'll put a bit of hot glue in there, uh, just to make sure that it, it stays in place. But uh, because this is so deep, I don't think this is ever going to move. Uh, up, and we'll drop in our servo, like so. Run our wire down. In through, this is where the carbon fiber spar went. Uh, the carbon fiber spar gives you a lot of room to put your uh, your servo leads down along the side. And to keep everything in place, I take uh, some more tape and put it right on top of this. Uh, like so. I'm going to run it along the length of the spar. Again, not rocket science, but you do want to be good. And put a bit over here to cover the servo cover, just to make it look a little neater. So it kind of gives it that black uniform appearance. Now, the control horns that came with the kit, um, not my favorite. Um, I, I use these uh, for quick repairs in the field. I prefer uh, these horns here that have the uh, bottom bottom crimp clamp, these horns here. Um, so the, this is what I'm going to use instead of this. It also is square and it fits into the opening really well. So I just pop that through. Pop that through. Perfect. And then put the retainer on the other side. Nice and strong. And I'll put a touch of glue on there as well just to uh, reinforce it. Okay. So we got good clear movement. Uh, I've already put the, it, it also came with these uh, quick, I think they're called easy, easy connect or quick connect uh, right in the kit. That was kind of handy to have. Uh, you just there. There we go. And And reconnect it to the controller. Um, normally I would put Loctite on all of these, but we keep that in there for now. So now, and also it said in the manual, these, uh, these control surfaces should be up by about five degrees. So I just kind of kind of guesstimate on that. And I'll just adjust that around to five degrees. Perfect. Okay, that's it for the uh, for the servos. That's all. That's all there is uh, to the control connection. Now I am going to be um, adding the uh, canopy to the uh, cockpit area, and in order to make the canopy fit, you have to trim off the excess material here. Uh, if you just cut along the mold line, there's a mold line that goes all the way around it. Just cut along that mold line and it fits perfectly. So I'm going to use some uh, CA uh, to glue uh, the canopy on. I'm now also going to glue on, glue in place the, um, glue in place the uh, magnetic clips that are going to be going, there's three of them that go on to the unit. I'll be gluing those on. And then we will start uh, putting on the uh, electronics. The uh